the students are coming back to school next week and I swear I'm like 5,000% just not ready. <laughs> Hello again team, it's Jess or Jashi Karin and welcome back for my week 5 plan with me. In today's video I'm going to be setting up for the 27th of January through to the 2nd of February. But before we get into that, as per usual, we're just going to have a look at how this week is going. So as you'll remember from last week's plan with me, I had a space for each day of the week, a small section for notes, a space for a running to-do list, my mini trackers, and my leisure tracker. Honestly, I can't say I've been getting in here very much this week. We've got week zero or staff only week happening at the moment, so I've really kind of been preoccupied with that rather than filling things out in here. Because last week I was in Melbourne, you guys didn't actually get to see how I'd used week three, so flipping back to that one, you can see that the packing list certainly got used, but the task list not so much. Because I was in Melbourne, I didn't really have a lot of to-do list things to write down. For the week coming though, I'm going to be going back to a layout that's more similar to this one than it is to this one. Mainly just because I'd like to have a larger space for my running to-do list. Flipping over though, as per usual, any of the equipment I use in today's setup is linked in the description box below. As per usual, in today's video, I'm also going to be answering the questions that were left on last week's plan with me. So our first question comes from Daphne, who said, Hi Jess, I hope your trip is going well. Certainly did go well, thank you Daphne. I'm having trouble finding a nice writing utensil for my bujo. I've been using the microns for almost a year now, but I'm finding that they don't dry as quickly as I'd like. Any suggestions on other things I could write with? This one's kind of tricky to answer because it kind of depends on what journal you're using as to which pen's going to work best in that journal. For instance, my favorite pen is the Pit Artist pen, obviously, because I use it every time I do anything in my journal. <laughs> but I find that that pen does not work well in LT1917s, for example, because it has coated paper, it means that it takes too long to dry, and I end up smudging things. In the journals I use nowadays though, that pen works really well for me because it does dry quickly because the paper isn't coated. So although my initial instinct would be to recommend you the Pit Artist pen, it might not actually work in the journal you're using. My second recommendation would be to trial a bunch of different ones, but I can also understand how that might not be a really good course of action because pens aren't necessarily cheap. <laughs> For quite a while actually, I found that one of my favourite pens to use in my journal was a regular ballpoint pen. That one was from the Zebra brand, it was in black, and I found that it gave me the quality of black ink that I was looking for, it dried with a nice amount of time, and I could apply a little bit more pressure without having to worry about a bullet tip blunting, like I do have with the Pit Artist pens. I know this has probably been a very unhelpful answer, and I am sorry for that. But if I was to go with my top three favourite pens, it would have to be my Pit Artist pen, which I personally write with the S size pen, the Papermate Inkjoy pen, only because I love the quality of the black ink, I love how smoothly it writes, and those are the ones that I'll typically use in my power sheets. And my third favourite one would probably have to be the Papermate Liquid Flare pens. Again for the quality of the black, but I don't typically use these in my bullet journals because they are a lot more inky and they have a tendency to bleed through paper that isn't up to the challenge. If anybody else has any suggestions for Daphne though, please do leave them in the comments below. I personally love hearing about new pens and it'd be cool to find out what everybody else is using. The next question we have is from Wine, Tea and Paper who asked, how do you make your outro screen? I really love it. Well, thank you for that compliment. The way that my outro screen works is it's essentially a picture file that I then overlay the video footage onto. When I edit that part in particular, I edit backwards because I always want my outro screen to have 20 seconds because then it's easier to actually put the outro screen on when it gets to YouTube. So I put the picture file in and then I put the video footage on top of that and then work backwards from the last second of that footage back 20 seconds into the video. By doing this editing backwards, it means that I have a pretty seamless transition between my main footage and then the footage over the top of my outro screen. I know this explanation would probably be a lot more helpful with visuals, and it is obviously using my specific editing software that I can do this, but if you guys would like to see some behind the scenes editing footage, just let me know in the comments. 
Our next question comes from Marlous, who asked, what elements are necessary on a weekly spread for you? The main thing that I need in a weekly spread is just somewhere to write down the things I need to get done. So for me, the simplest weekly that I can be happy with using is just a long running to-do list. Ideally, there's also somewhere in there that I can record what day tasks got done, but it's not essential. Another part that I do prefer to have though is spaces for each day of the week so that I can write down day specific tasks and events. Outside of that though, pretty much everything is a bonus. Our next question is also from Daphne and she asked, how do you know when to use a structured weekly and when to use dailies? I'm having trouble determining when to use them because I like planning ahead with a weekly layout, but I also like using dailies to save space and thinking about my tasks one day at a time is sometimes less stressful than thinking about my whole week in advance. To be honest for this one, I'm not even sure if I ever do know when to use a structured weekly versus dailies. A lot of the time when I elect to go with dailies rather than a structured weekly, it's mainly because I'm doing it as an experiment. This dilemma in particular is why my favorite weeklies include both spaces that are smaller for each day of the week so that I can record day specific tasks and events, and also larger open spaces to write dailies down. In general though, the weeks that I'll use a structured weekly are the ones where I know there'll be certain days where I'll just be way too busy to write things down, but I still need to have my task list accessible. Having a structured weekly in these cases means that before those stressful busy days come, I can have written down my task list, so doing that two, maybe three, or even four days in advance. If I'm using dailies, typically the to-do lists I'm writing are for that day. And if my day's already busy enough, I'm not going to want to sit down in front of my journal and write out all the things I need to get done. I'm going to want to just get on and do them. So those weeks in particular are the ones that I find it more helpful to have a structured weekly. Our next question comes from Kara, who on week three's plan with me asked, what are the bullet counts on this layout? I love the setup. I'm super glad you like the layout, Kara, and it's actually really hard to explain spacing over voiceover. So what I'm gonna do is draw up a little picture for you on a piece of scrap paper and post it on your comment on that video. If anybody else ever wanted to know the spacing on any of the layouts that I make, please do let me know. I love it when you guys try them out for yourselves. And I do wanna make that as easy as possible for you. Alrighty, so there is a space down the side of this page for all of my events, a section here for my running task list, my mini trackers, leisure tracker, a notes section, and then a section for something else. At this stage, I'm not too sure what I'm going to put here. This obviously looks quite similar to the one I did back in week two, but I don't want to do the successes, challenges, and improvement sections just because I know that it's going to be the first week back at school, I am not going to fill that in. So I might end up putting some kind of information box or something like that about things that are happening in the first week that don't typically happen. Maybe some kind of a schedule for day one in particular, because I know that timetable is a fair bit different to how things usually operate. But at this stage, haven't actually made any formal decisions. Thank you for watching team, and thank you as always to our inquirers from last week. If you guys have any questions you want me to answer in next week's video, please do leave them in the comment section below. As always, if you liked today's video, please do make sure to give it a big thumbs up, and I will see you guys again on Sunday for my February plan with me. Until next time, bye!